Well, hello, friends, and thanks very much for joining us here for Proactive's one-to-one uh, Vester Forum. We're excited to uh, talk about uh, this company that's involved in actually the oldest profession in the world. We're talking about farming here, folks, in case you're wondering. It's Clean Seed Capital Group, although it takes uh, farming to a whole new level, their expertise and their amazing technology as well. They trade under the ticker CSX on the TSXV and in the U.S. on the OTC at CLGPF. Friends, please welcome into our conversation the chairman and CEO, Graham Lampierre. Graham, uh, welcome. Good to see you again, my friend. How are you? Good. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Looking forward to this presentation. Yeah, we're super excited to learn more about your technology. As I mentioned, uh, you're in the farming game, so I'm going to let you take it away, and uh, everyone's very excited to see uh, what you have for in store for us. Great. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Uh, company name, Clean Seed Capital, is mentioned, uh, listed on the TS Venture. Uh, CSX. Um, disclaimer, a um, little bit small for you to read, but you'll get that on the presentation later. Uh, before I get into some details, I'll go into a bit of history. Um, most of us view agriculture as our local grocery store or a farmer's market, and uh, we don't really think about where it all begins. And where agriculture truly begins is in the process of planting and seeding uh, your crop into the ground. And uh, for many years now, we've been refining and perfecting a new platform, both electronically, mechanically, an entire new fleet of equipment that will that has brought to bear modern technology that we have in our phones and our smart TVs and data gathering information that really was left negligent in the agricultural space. And it wasn't really applied into the seeding and planting market. So we took advantage of that. Uh, we listed the company uh, about 10 years ago, and we developed uh, several platforms, uh, full-size equipment. We traveled across Western Canada with uh, uh, the largest dealer network in the country to validate our technology, to run our technology on our data platform, testing platforms. And finally, now we're very proud to uh, reveal the brand new uh ready for commercialization smart seeder max smart seeder max is a completely new category of seeding and planting equipment to drastically improve our crop production protocols at the very early stage many people think that farming is uh the guy in his overalls with a tractor and a bit of straw hanging out of his mouth uh, that's changed and uh, we've been at the forefront of this for many years, we've invested $20 million in getting this technology on its feet and ready for commercialization. What you see in front of you now is the final model, which is a combination of seeding and planting that has technology that we've translated from the auto industry, uh, from clouding, uh, and I'll go through various different aspects of the technology as we move along. Uh, everything that we have is driven to high resolution seed delivery protocols for farming, meaning that we can now blend multiple products at a single foot on every foot of the field. And we can put all the different inoculants, fertilizers, seed in any configuration at any position the farmer requires to maximize his crop production. It's not been done before. Uh, we have exclusive worldwide patents on this technology, and it gives us the ability to truly micromanage everything that goes into the ground. So it goes from a mono environment of very general seeding into a high resolution, high definition delivery protocol, which is affecting the impact on yields. Our patents are worldwide. Everything you see there in green is all heavy crop production countries. Uh, we've spent uh, a lot of money and a lot of time making sure that our patents are secure in all the key growing nations of the world. Uh, first started off with the uh, United States and Canada, then we evolved into the European markets, Australia and so forth, to make sure that uh, our IP was the most stable it could be. Um, crop production is a science. Uh, many people, again, think that you just you see a field and the plow goes along and they put in some seed and up comes your crop. It's not like that anymore. We're under pressure to uh, feed the world and uh, we technology now is going to have a major impact on how that is done. There's companies throughout the market that have started to uh, 
become very influential in soil sampling and they test the soil. They take imagery, satellite imagery, drone imagery. I'm sure you've all heard of drone technology, satellite imagery, and, and they put all of this together, weather, and they come up with input recommendations for farmers. The challenge is, is there's no, there wasn't until now a machine in the world that could actually execute those high resolution delivery options created. So why it's changed, this is, these are the machines of the past here. Uh, we like to call them constantly in, uh, inconsistent. Um, they're air seeders. Air seeders have been in the market for the last 25, 30 years. Uh, they meter their products from a main tank and they distribute it along a lot of spaghetti junction lines. And by the time that that seed and uh, fertilizer reaches the ground, the inconsistency is quite dramatic. Uh, you'll see a in-house study done there on several machines that by the time you go from one end of the drill to the other, the inconsistencies can go up to 45% in some cases. It's just an inconsistent approach now and it is a thing of the past. And Clean Seed has developed the new machine, which uh, completely disrupts this space. And uh, it's a whole new category that farmers will be uh, leaning towards because of the improvement on their crops. Not only have we built the hardware, we've also built all the software for this technology. It's proprietary to us. Uh, we could not only take all of these input prescription maps and execute them to the square foot, but we can also record all that data we can tag where every single seed has gone, uh, how it's performing, where it went, what it went in with. Uh, the end results uh, have been fascinating for us on the crop uh, yield increases, but also it's giving us an opportunity to be able to leverage the data that comes off of this input and uh, start to really maximize how we can move towards artificial intelligence where this technology is uh, very sensor heavy and, it, and we're moving towards a point where this is going to be a machine that can read, understand the soil content in one pass and execute on that delivery. Here's an example. This was our prototype machine. We built six of those uh, and had them all across Western Canada. The map that you see right there is a layover on one of our farms in Alberta. And you see with the, the green, the yellow, the red, is the fluctuation in nitrogen and various input requirements for that field to maximize the yield. So uh, if you can imagine this as the world's largest printer, we can take five products and we can print them as equal to that map, exactly how that map is displayed. So when that machine goes through the field, it is actually delivering a foot by foot basis input that actually maximizes the uh, yield return for the farmer. Once that has gone in, uh, that information gets clouded. And as mentioned, uh, um, we're really moving towards AI. We've signed a letter of intent with one of the largest uh, blue chip uh, companies in the world who specializes in multitude of things, but weather and agriculture is a big push for them. Uh, we're working with them on how to leverage that data and information that comes off the technology uh, to also improve crop production globally. Uh, when we first came out with the technology, we demonstrated it again across Western Canada. We received a lot of support from uh, the local media, farming communities, and uh, it really did give us a strong validation of what we had. Uh, we had challenges with the first machines. They were a bit heavy, a bit wide, but we proved the concept of what we were doing, and now we've taken all of that input from the farming community and uh, launch the Smart Cedar Max, which addresses some of the shortfalls. One of the things I should point out is uh, a large portion of the shareholders of this company are farmers that have been hands-on with the development of this technology. And a lot of this uh, company is held by management as well. So it's uh, very friendly to the shareholders of uh, who's been involved. Hey, Graham, we're just, uh, we're just getting a little bit of uh, interference with your signal. Um, just We couldn't hear what you said. I think you're back now. So uh, you just said a moment ago, I just want to say one thing. So just repeat that part so folks can hear you. Uh, the last slide, sorry about that. Um, hopefully this uh, is clear now. The, we've received a lot of uh, support from uh, all the media across the country. Um, the majority of the investors are farmers that have actually been hands-on involved in the development of this technology. Um, many uh, 
papers and uh, news channels and independent researchers have verified that this truly is a unique technology that is a game changer and sets a new standard in, in crop production around the world. Uh, this is uh, an example, simple example. On the right side, you see our original test bed CX6 smart seeder. This is the root development structure compared to a leading air seeder. Uh, it's night and day. The yield results from that have been extensive. Um, we save not only on the inputs because it's micromanaged, but also the crop yield results because everything's been placed in the right spot has been a huge increase. Um, conservatively, actually, it's $100 an acre. And you can imagine your average farm of $5,000 an acre, you're talking about a half a million dollar return on your crop production. And that's not in considering intercropping and various other options that this drill can do to expand even further on that. Uh, the Saskatchewan government um, verified that there was no equivalent innovation in the country or in the marketplace. And uh, right now, uh, they gave us a uh, tax deduction of 50% uh, for 15 years, which has been helpful. The Canadian government has been extensively involved in financing our project. Hey, Graham, I'm going to stop you again because we're having a job here. It's, it's an issue at the end, Matt, unfortunately. Um, I know you mentioned um, that uh, a, lot, a lot of media were, were checking things out. I think we're going to pull him out and then bring him back in again. Sometimes that helps when he comes back in. But he was talking a little bit about the, the, the work that done with the Saskatchewan government, uh, talking about obviously this uh, slide that he's showing right now. This is when they launched the uh, original product. It was attended, as you mentioned, by uh, uh, farmers, by groups that are, are sort of advocates for the farming community, uh, by other people who are in the farming area to try and find out a little bit more about what was going on with this new smart cedar and just how important it is. And you know, I did an interview with uh, Graham, uh, oh, I guess a few months back, and he was talking a little bit about uh, some things that were happening within the company and within him and, and just how they're ready to launch this new product and just how down to literally the 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 inch or the it is to try and get these these seeds planted to get the maximum yield out of everything so um can you hear me steve at all yeah yeah we can hear you now so you can flick your camera back on and uh we'll uh, be able to seem to, want, seem to doesn't want to let me flick the camera on so i'll just go through the slides guys Sorry okay sounds good Oh, there we go. My connection seems fine on my end. But anyways, so back to where we were. Sorry about the uh, technical difficulties, part of this new process, I guess. Uh, one of the big uh, successes for us was getting the patent issued in the United States. A lot of our uh, competitors and the big boys out there in the business didn't feel that we would get such a high tech um, patent, but we did. And that had an impact for us to start moving into looking at the U.S. markets. I want to touch on uh, some agreements that we've done recently that will accelerate the growth of this business. Uh, recently, we signed a joint venture agreement with Norwood. Uh, Norwood is a manufacturing facility out of North Dakota, the United States. Uh, they have 180,000 square feet, 150 employees, but they are a very sophisticated manufacturer. They a lot of robotic welding and so forth, and they build for John Deere, they build for Case, and they're now building for us. One of the significant uh, uh, components of this transaction is not only um, do we no longer have the financial burden of looking at acquiring a facility or uh, greenfielding a new plant manufacturing facility, we've joint venture partnered with Norwood. But what came with that uh, partnership was a tried tested uh, frame system that really gave us exactly what we needed to address some of the challenges we were facing with our larger machine. So this Norwood transaction comes with the frame system that's now on the Smart Cedar Max that's been in the field for years. So it's tried, tested and true. We've now implemented all of our technologies on it. So the relationship really is, is they finance all the costs of the iron production. We finance the cost of the electronic and the brains that drives it. And we share in that relationship. So it's a, a big financial relief for the company. And they've been absolutely phenomenal to work with. And uh, we look forward to growing with them rapidly. They have a lot of capabilities and capacity to grow the business. Uh, most recently, we signed a worldwide agreement for singulation metering. That gives us the opportunity to start moving uh, into the United States planting market and be a direct competitor to the majors. Uh, this combined with our uh, multi-product technology 
uh, not only gives us the edge on uh, the smart uh, Cedar Max, but it also gives the ability for us to leverage heavily into the planting side in the US and abroad. Uh, recently, we signed an agreement with AMVAC. It's an American company on the NASDAQ exchange. Uh, that company um, has, uh, we did a deal with them for a licensing agreement. They were heading down a path of putting inoculants in the ground in a similar fashion to what we were doing. So there was a mutual understanding that uh, collaborating uh, and then licensing some of our patents was in their interest and also gave us an opportunity to uh, utilize some of their technologies. They invested $2.5 million in a license fee, plus an ongoing royalty revenue income stream that starts next year. And they also invested an, an additional 2.5 million US at uh, 40 cents uh, US a share recently, which is about twice the current market. Uh, recently also, we uh, signed a technology agreement for a worldwide rights exclusive from XRO Technologies. It's a new company that has uh, developed a new process on controlling electric motors. We're leveraging that technology uh, with our technology to uh, electrify components of the ag industry in general, but mainly our drill to start that will relieve pressures on uh, the tractors and also eliminate a lot of hydraulics that are used that are a thing of the past. Uh, we're also going to be uh, looking at retrofit markets for that as well. So it's a secondary thing to our main core business, but it is an additional add-on of benefit to what we're doing. Management team, um, my family's been in the ag space since the 1980s. Started with my father, my brother and I have been with Clean Seed from the beginning. Um, we've been around this our whole lives. Um, Gary Anderson, he is the co-founder of Ag Growth International. It's a billion dollar company in the grain handling business. Um, he's our president. Um, he's been with us now for a few years. He's also a significant shareholder and he's working closely with uh, me and the team on uh, M&A activities and other strategies. Uh, Colin Rush was uh, worked with John Deere, Case, uh, JCB. He's been in the business his whole career. Uh, Stephen Brazard, our CFO, has been with us from the beginning. A uh, uh, very talented group on top of all of the technical teams uh, that we have involved in the business. You'll be able to get more information on our website, on our uh, team members. At the end of the day, um, we all have to eat. Uh, crop production needs to expand. We've uh, developed a new class of machinery. Uh, let me explain it of going from a dial phone to a sophisticated iPhone. This changes everything. And you'll see over the next few months, we're doing virtual launches. We're ready in production. We have the largest distributor in the country ready to go. And uh, this will completely disrupt the industry because we've taken it from a mono environment to a high definition input environment. Uh, the world population is growing, uh, the land isn't. So we're maximizing crop production. Uh, um, our initial market just in North America is $5 billion. We've proven that this is cost savings and yield increasing. We have uh, uh, excellent industry partnerships. Uh, our intellectual property is secured worldwide and demand for food will never change. Uh, it will always be here. Uh, this is our share structure at the moment. I think uh, we're trading around the 35 cent mark. Uh, again, to uh, remind everybody, most of these shares are owned by the farming community and management. I think that's as quick as I can get through it, Steve, for now. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions at another date, or you could phone uh, our office for more information. Absolutely. And we do have some questions that people have sent in. So we'll we'll get to some of those questions. For First off, Graham, thank you very much. A great presentation and uh, super interesting. A uh, couple of questions we're getting along here. Uh, first off, um, one of the questions that someone wanted to ask was, how do you um, convince farmers that the technology route is the way to go when they, you know, they've been farming, as you mentioned, for, for thousands of years. So how do you sort of get people to understand why the technology is just showing them the cost savings? Is that is that one of the big reasons? I think uh, we're in a generational shift now and uh, there's a lot of younger generation coming into the farming as, uh, as the farm gets handed over and they're more familiar with technology. They're more familiar with how technology works. And they're also starting to see the advantages of uh, of what technology brings in their other operations from monitoring their grain bins to 
monitoring where their equipment is and so forth. And we made sure that we built this technology as a very simple plug and play environment. And I think the generation now recognizes the advantages of technology. But at the end of the day, they know that micromanagement of their inputs and precisely placing what they need on every square foot is a natural foregone conclusion that it's going to improve their yields. And from our initial test runs for years across the country, the results were extensive. Farmers, early adopters have seen this. And I think as soon as your neighbors are using this machine and they've got an extra million dollars or so in their end pocketbook, word spreads pretty quick in the farming community. It's a very small environment. I can imagine. Um, we have a question from Dan, and he wanted to know uh, a bit more about the about the data that you talked about a little bit earlier. And is that something that potentially the company could monetize down the road? Well, Dan, um, the data is a is a touchy subject. The data is right now is for the farmer. The farmer really is smarter than most people think. He's not that. Uh, he doesn't wear his jeans and, and, and his hat and go out and just run a tractor. He really does understand the value of data. Um, right now, we are in the process of tying in uh, with our uh, existing partners, uh, weather data, soil sample data, all in one shift. At the moment, yes, it will be monetized for the company uh, to the farmer directly to leverage those assets. As far as wide distribution of that data, that's going to be an open dialogue with government bodies and uh, the community as it goes. But right now, yes, we are monitorizing it. We will be. And yes, it will be directly for the farmer to leverage those assets as he gets the information off the drill. Okay. A couple more questions. Uh, Bob wrote in a moment ago, wanted to know about, is this kind of technology more significant now as we've seen the effects of global warming? Um, has an impact. One of the big uh, portions of what we're doing is is our opener system, which actually is the part that goes into the ground, was developed by my father actually many years ago. Mm -hmm. And the whole point of that was to control the disturbance of the soil surface. So carbon sequestration is what the driver was behind it to keep that carbon in the ground. So uh, when you combine our row unit of keeping that uh, that soil structure closed, and then the ability to intercrop with our drill, because it's the only drill in the world that will intercrop with the sophistication that this does, that keeps crop cover in place. So I would say that it does have an impact. The significance of that yet to be determined, but it certainly plays a meaningful role for sure. Okay. Uh, Philip also wanted to know about the machines that, uh, are you producing them in, in bunches or will you produce them on, on purchase orders as you get them? Uh, we're going to produce them. We're going in this business. You're selling in the fall of the of the season. So this year, for example, we're going to be doing demonstrations at the end of September through October for winter wheat and so forth. And we'll start taking orders for the following season. So we're going to uh, they'll be built to order, but they're ordered six months in advance. Uh, that being said, we are looking at distribution agreements in the United States with some pre-orders. And uh, we do have plans to uh, build a little extra inventory because we do believe that this technology, with all the years we've dedicated to getting it right, uh, this is now ready to go. So I would suspect on the, for this following season, we certainly will have some inventory in place and Rocky Mountain Equipment will working closely with us on distribution. All right. And the last question that comes from Frank, and he wanted to know if um, North America is your your main area for uh, trying to sell the machines, or do you see an opportunity to potentially sell uh, in other places around the world? We intend to go global with this technology because it's scalable. You can take this technology from one foot all the way up to uh, 80 feet to 100 feet because every single row acts as an independent drill. So for now, for the North American launch is uh, will be next year. Uh, mm -hmm. We're already working with our counterpart in Brazil. We're talking to parties in Australia. And one of the design principles that we liked about the Norwood frame and so forth was the fact that it was con you could containerize it. So there'll be a combination of uh, shipping overseas, but also license opportunities. We've shown that with AMVAC. Uh, and there will be other license opportunities for European markets and so forth. Clean Seed's objective is to influence crop production around the world and improve crop production around the world. And that'll be done through a combination of hard 
assets on the ground and license agreements with other parties to leverage the asset. Okay, and I'll let Michael get one last question because it just popped up. Uh, yep. Michael, what's the price point and how does that compare with traditional equipment that potentially is on the market now? Uh, the price point for this machine is around the $700,000 mark, Canadian. Uh, that is equivalent to the high-end air seeders that are out there. I won't mention names, but it was, it's about 100% of the existing high-end air seeders that we're going to disrupt. And I'm, unfortunately, with all due respect, make a little bit obsolete. But um, we're about the same price point of a, of a good quality air seeder with uh, a great deal of uh, technological uh, advantages. So we've made sure from a uh, sales perspective to stay within the pocketbook uh, of the farmer and stay competitive uh, with our competitors, but uh, outstrip them with regards to technology and the benefits of what this brings to the market. All right, there we go. Graham, thank you so much. Great to see you again uh, and uh, appreciate you being with us today. Such great information and, and thanks for answering the questions as well. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. No problem. It may have been on my end as well. So there you go. Graham, thank you so much. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye.